failed to do, miserably to do that this morning. Uh, I guess it's up to me. So as you heard, Eric, Eric said that Jane is going to Colorado to become a skiing grandmother and for some other reason, I can't remember what it was. <coughs> uh, I couldn't resist showing this slide. Oops, wrong computer. <coughs> this is Jane. Um, <coughs> this was taken several years ago, uh, just after Jane's knee was demolished by a snowboarder. Was it here or in Colorado? Utah. In Utah. And it just so happened that uh, Maggie Bartlett of our communications office was right there to take pictures of the event. So we have it recorded. She promised never to show it. She broke uh, that recording. Well, but she's, she's not showing. As I said, Maggie, Maggie happened to be right there. I was actually going to say fortuitously Maggie was there, but I don't know if Jane would agree with that. Um, but there's actually a serious point that I want to make from this slide. Um, Jane seems to be accident prone, and <clears throat> a few years later, uh, she was in another accident where she broke her ankle. And that one happened to be just before the first meeting of the H3 Africa Consortium. Um, Jane this is the first meeting in Addis Ababa. So Jane decided that with her broken ankle and against the advice of her doctors, her family, and everybody else, she, uh, she decided uh, she would go to <coughs> Addis and not let a mere inability to walk stop her. <coughs> so she managed to use me mechanically, this is a device she was using to scoot around, to uh, get herself to, um, to Otis. And the effect was uh, that the attendees at the meeting, um, who had just been funded by uh, NIH, mostly for the first time, who were not used to uh, uh, NIH grants administrators and so forth, were incredibly impressed that she would uh, make the effort uh, in spite of not being able to walk and uh, found that it, it really showed um, her dedication to the project. And <coughs> they were right. I think um, commitment and dedication have been the hallmark of Jane's career with uh, NHGRI, OHGRI, NCHGR, whatever it was at the time. <clears throat> she has been involved in a number of projects, uh, sequencing, this is the, from the Bermuda meeting, um, human microbiome projects, some H3 Africa stuff. <clears throat> I know it's a little hard to see her in there, so uh, I hope that helps. <laughs> I point this one out in particular because if you look at the picture, you can, all you can see is her hair because she's blocked by Jim Watson's hat. Um, <clears throat> another thing, another contribution, major contribution that Jane has made to NHGRI, which I don't think is as well known, is that she's the person who started the program analyst program. Um, and we've been <clears throat> very fortunate over the years to have, uh, since 1992 actually, to have a group of really enthusiastic and talented young people who come to NHGR right out of college, have spent <clears throat> two years more or less here, some a little less, some a little longer, and then they've gone on to medical school or graduate school or law school or in a couple of cases, have uh, made NHGRI their career. Now, <clears throat> and, and, and I think this is one of Jane's uh, big legacies to us. So <clears throat> I know, just to finish up, I know you all are wondering how someone so young as Jane <clears throat> is ready to retire. And the answer is, that she was very young when she started at NHGRI. 
embarrassing enough. <laughs> so, <clears throat> I just so um, just want to thank Jane for everything she's done for NHGRI, and give her one last chance to uh, correct all the embarrassing things that have been said about her. <laughs>